When it comes to beginner versus pro cinematic videos, there are a few absolutely dead giveaways between the two. I wanna show you in today's video how you guys can take your beginner looking footage and start to make it look a lot more professional with a few really easy key takeaways that you guys will be able to start implementing immediately into your own videos. I'm gonna show you both versions. I'll show you the beginner version, the things that you kind of shouldn't do, and then I'm also gonna show you the pro version and the things that I think make the hugest difference when it comes to making your videos look cinematic and professional. We're not gonna be doing it like this, I'm gonna give you guys the full immersive experience by shooting on a 360 cam that's actually attached to this camera. So you're gonna be getting a POV perspective that's gonna be very raw and uncut. I'm gonna take you guys through the whole process so you can really, really see what it's actually like for at least when I film something cinematic out here on the beach. Let's jump over into the 360 cam and we'll start shooting the beginner version. Now we over onto our other angles, really give you guys the full scene of what we're doing. So let's jump straight into it and start with our beginner sequence. We're down here on the beach, we got some beautiful scenes. We got the ocean, all these cool rocks. And as a beginner, I'm gonna slap my camera over into slow motion because slow motion is badass. So, we're gonna shoot everything in slow-mo. Let's start off, I can see a couple things that I really like. I really like this with the sun behind it and these rocks and I also really like the ocean and everything. So we're gonna to wanna to show all of that. So let's start off by showing these rocks. Looks really nice. And these trees, very, very cool. I like them. And we're gonna go down to the ocean here and I'm gonna zoom in to get a better shot of those waves. Cool, that's our first shot. We'll get a shot of these trees. They're sick. Rocks are sick. Trees, very cool. And this view is also cool. There's mountains in the background and everything. I wanna get a little further away so I can get a wider one of these trees. Just really show them and this view is also nice. That's quite cool, yep. And we can show the whole thing. Give the viewer a really good idea of where we are by showing the beach this way. We can show the river, the trees, and the mountains this side. Let's go show the water. Cool reflection. If you guys have noticed yourself doing some of the things that I'm doing right now, don't feel bad. Everybody does it, I still do some of these things. But that's the point of this video. I'm gonna show you guys how to avoid these things so we can make our footage look much, much better and much more pro. Let's see if we can get one from kind of the tree line. Jungle vibes. And we can show that we're actually at the beach. I want to really give the viewer the feeling of where we are. So if I do these trees, mountains, beach, and the view, I think that's a good, like, well-rounded shot. Wink. Okay. <laughs> Let's see if we can get a shot of these waves. Because a beginner would still walk around on the beach, try and find a good shot. We could even get a shot looking back here for that big wide one. And we can try and encompass this whole mountain into our shot to give the scale of it. We'll get a shot of this as these waves are coming in. I get a zoomed in one of the waves in this rock. It also looks quite nice. Okay. That is gonna be our beginner shots. If you guys are doing this or you're filming videos somewhat in this way, don't stress. Everybody does. I, I often find myself doing a lot of the things that I've demonstrated in this. But let's roll this one edited to the same track we'll use for the pro one and see how it looks and see if you guys can spot anything that is just off things that you would change before I tell you. Let's see if you guys can notice a couple of things that stand out. So let's roll that one.
Let's start looking at our pro version. See how we can change this up and make it look infinitely better. So first thing I've done, I've swapped my camera over into not slow motion, 24 frames per second. I'm still gonna shoot some slow motion, but I'm not gonna just shoot everything in slow motion and think if I wanna use some of it in slow-mo or regular speed later on, because that is gonna affect our shutter speed and it's not gonna look as nice and cinematic. There's something that happens to your footage when you have the correct shutter speed with the frame rate, and if you're shooting everything in slow motion, not to mention the fact that you're getting a lower quality because your camera is fitting all of those extra frames into the same bit rate, you're also gonna lose any of that motion blur. So we're gonna be intentional. When we want slow motion, we'll swap it over into slow motion, which we will definitely want. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna shoot with intention and we can see what we're interested in here. There's a couple things, this little river, the rocks, the trees, mountain, and the beach down there, the ocean, the waves. But now, instead of trying to just capture them like this and get them all in one, Let's isolate them into their each individual own little shots. Not only that, we are also gonna control the way that we move our camera and our shot. So we're not gonna pan around and show from one to the next. We're gonna say, what movement is my camera gonna do in this shot? Is it a push forward? That's the only movement that we're gonna do then. Is it a slide across? Is it a pull back? But there's only gonna be one movement per shot. So let's start off with one looking down here of these rocks and this kind of river, it's really nice and misty. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit and I'm gonna do one consistent motion on one consistent subject. So we're gonna go this way and we're gonna do a slide across. That's it. And we're gonna try one more. We've also introduced a foreground element with this rock in front of us. We're gonna do a slide. And we're gonna do one last one, which is another thing. Do multiple takes until you're happy. Let's see a slide here. That's nice. Now we can go to our next thing. These trees. How do we want to get a shot of these trees to show them where we are? We're going to isolate the trees and be intentional with our shot. We can do a push forward. I'm going to watch out for my shadow there. We can do a push forward because we are arriving, this is gonna be one of our first shots, so we can push forward like this. If you are having trouble with stability, a good way to cope with that is to shoot in slow motion because any of those micro jitters in your shots can be taken out if you slow it down. So there is justification in shooting everything in a higher frame rate if you do wanna slow it down, if you're gonna be doing a lot of slow movements. Let's see, looking back on these mountains again, and we are gonna get nice and low because it creates much more interest than shooting at eye level, that's what we see all the time. Let's be down here, and we can get one nice shot, and we're gonna do one consistent movement again, and we're gonna lift up like this. It's all about just being more intentional with what you're shooting, you know? You kind of don't just get to a place and just shoot everything that you see that's somewhat interesting. Think about what you want your video to look like at the end. I'm almost getting tired with this heavy setup with this whole 360 camera and everything. <laughs> um, one of the next things I want to get is these trees. And something that I often see beginners doing is not controlling their light properly. It's often misunderstood that you should always shoot with the sun kind of behind you so that it lights everything up, lights up your scene, fills in all those shadows. And sometimes this is true, yes, but you also can sometimes get some really interesting effects when you shoot directly into the sunlight. So what we're gonna do here is have the sun behind these trees. I'm trying to get a little further back. And we're gonna do a nice slide out to get these trees and the beach, but also get that sun kind of revealing itself. That's a cool shot. And it's gonna be in slow motion as well, which means we can slow it down to get that nice lens flare. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing, but I'm gonna zoom in all the way. And something I always look out for is that I wanna make my shots significantly different from each other if I think that they might be paired next to each other. A good way to think of this is the 70-30 rule. 
which basically means if you want two shots next to each other, you need to change either the angle by 70 degrees so that you're moving significantly different from your previous shot, or you need to change your focal length by 30 millimeters, the 70-30 rule. It's a really great one because if you have two shots that are too similar and you put them right next to each other, they don't really cut very well with one another. Our next shot we're gonna get here is one that we're gonna have to get involved because if you wanna be a pro and you wanna get the pro shots, you need to get involved. Don't use your zoom. Don't think you can shoot everything from where you are. Move around and really make the most of your scene. We have some of these kind of cool light rays coming through here with like some of this mist in the air. I wanna see if I can get something that just shows that. And we can do a slide and I actually wanna do a slide from right to left because that's what we were doing in our previous shots. So I can keep them going the same way so we can use them next to one another. You can do them going the opposite ways, it's fine. I kind of like to keep things the same way, it makes it a bit interesting. Check out these light rays that we got down here. Let's try to see if we can show those a bit. We're gonna do a slide. Cool little light rays. And something that I'm really focusing on, oh these light rays look cool, is that I wanna show the details, I wanna show the elements of this location that really make it feel the way it does because when you are showing your viewer something they're only going to see what you show them and if you're only showing them these big shots kind of of everything they're not getting a true idea of what it feels like the other thing i want to do is get a shot looking out here because it's a way i can show how close these trees and everything are to our background without having to pan so i'm just going to do one push forward and something you'll notice <laughs> which is less of a tip and more just a statement is that I'm putting a lot more effort into the pro version and that's because if you want to make something that looks good it actually takes a lot of effort it's not as simple okay the light rays aren't looking any better than they were before it's not as simple as just whipping out your camera and pointing at things that you think look nice and editing it later we actually need to act as if we are shooting something legit we need to create something cool so i want to get one or two more shots of this lake because river because it looks really nice and i think it's a really unique kind of looking place there's a lot of mist happening so you can't actually see too much of the lake but we can see these trees on the side so let's see if we can get a shot of those we're gonna get really low because we know that by doing that we're going to get much more interesting shots and i think what i'm going to do is try and get somewhat of a reflection going here i'm just trying to avoid those people so i can be here really nice and low i got this beautiful little lock off shot i'm not in slow motion anymore because i don't need it i'm also going to do a fully zoomed in one at a focal length greater than 30 millimeters of change and I'm going to do one looking sideways here as well to get this part of the frame it looks really nice and I can stand on this rock and not drop my camera in the water now it looks beautiful and we can do a lift we can tap to focus on our background and then we can lift foreground elements are going to move nice and fast that's really cool and we'll get a zoomed in one as well of this little shoreline just locked off not even any movement nice and simple ah! okay i don't want to get wet big waves coming <laughs> okay look at that wow the tides are so crazy Okay, I'm running away. While I am, I'm just gonna try to get a sliding shot of this, because it looks crazy cool with that guy. I'm gonna be nice and stable, and I'm also gonna get really nice and low. Get some shots of the water. Okay, back to what we're supposed to get. So, we can maybe time it now, and get as close as we can, and again, I don't have to just be with the light behind me like this. It does look cool and I will often do it, 
and I'm not limited to it and especially as the sun gets a bit lower now you can actually shoot almost straight into it I'll avoid having the actual sun it's going to create a big hot spot and even the Sony dynamic range is not going to be good enough to sort that out but I can shoot just next to the sun like this and we get this beautiful glow I'm going to try to get some of these waves maybe this one crashing on the rock Trying to stay low to create interest. That's a cool shot. Staying really low. Let's be low. We don't even have to move. We can do a slight slide to the left to match our others. That's it. And we're going to run away. <laughs> okay. We are going to do somewhat of a reveal we're going to be intentional and we're going to do one movement and our movement is going to be a pan up like this as we push forward so I'm going to stay there and I'm going to get one or two it's really low and get like this reflection on the water and I'm going to do a slow slide I'm going to do a zoomed in one of the same thing. This is looking beautiful. The waves are coming to ruin my shot. <laughs> and we'll actually get one of these waves. I'm just going to be like this. Woo! Nearly wet, you guys. Wow, that's cool. And you see how looking into the sun for that one creates that really nice look. So in the same way that in the beginning of our scene, we were doing quite a lot of pushing in, bringing our viewer into our scene, we're gonna get just one shot kind of pulling back now to give the feeling of ending off our scene. It's quite a cool log here. It's got some nice foreground. Just before we end our scene, I should see quite a nice shot here of this tree and this log and get a little slide I think that's cool so let's roll the pro one hopefully you guys notice a significant difference between the two let's roll it That is it for this video. I hope you guys found it useful. If you want to check out the lots that I use to color grade any of the footage you've seen in this video, they are linked down below, as well as I have a full filmmaking course that takes you through everything that you need to know from beginner to pro. There's a bunch of different modules. There's hours and hours of content in there. Really worth it, and it's on discount right now. If you guys want to, I always just keep watching the YouTube videos. I appreciate that as well. Hope you enjoyed. See you in the next one. Have fun. Bye.